Here are the five things you need to be doing to get ahead of 99% of data analysts in the next three to six months. Number one, become laser focused on what you want. If you're watching this video, chances are you want to become a data analyst, but specifically what type of data analyst do you want to become? Do you want to become a financial analyst? Do you want to become a healthcare analyst? What industry do you want to work in? What companies do you want to work for? What type of problems do you want to solve? What tools do you want to use? When do you want to land that job? How much do you want to make in that role? Do you want to be working remote, hybrid? What type of impact do you want to have at that organization? You need to get into the nitty gritty details of what you actually want in your data career. And once you figured out the what, then you need to ask why. Why do you want that role? Why that particular role, that particular company? Why this career in general? And then once you have that why, you need to ask why one more time. What's the actual reason that you want to be working from home? What's the actual reason you want to be making $100,000? Once you figure out that why, you should ask yourself why again. This is a method created by the founder of Toyota, Mr. Toyota himself, when he was trying to figure out an answer to a problem, he would ask why five times until he found the ultimate root cause of the desire or of the problem. Once you figured out what you want and why you want it, then commit yourself that you're actually going to do it. That no matter the cost, you're going to figure it out because your why is big enough. There's that old phrase, when there's a will, there's a way. And if your will is big enough, you'll figure out the way. No matter your background, even if you don't have any sort of technical experience, even if you're coming from a non-STEM background or you have no experience working at a desk job at all, you will figure it out. There's an old fable uh, that's called the crow in the pitcher that basically there was a crow that was really thirsty and it found a pitcher of water. But the neck of the pitcher was too thin for the crow to actually, you know, stoop its neck down there and get a drink. And I think a lot of us in this case would give up if we were the crow and be like, oh, look at this, this pitcher is too small. We're never going to be able to drink this water. I'm just gonna give up. I'm gonna say it's the economy. I'm gonna say it's the market. I'm gonna say it's just, you know, bad luck, but not this crow. This crow came up with a creative solution and actually found small stones that the crow could throw down into the pitcher ultimately raising the level of water high enough that the crow could drink from the pitcher. So I promise no matter your background, if you have a college degree, if you don't have a college degree, if you've been making six figures already, or if you've only been making $10,000 a year, we can figure out a plan to get you to a data analyst job. But it's important that we need to create a plan because when you fail to plan, you should plan to fail, honestly. If you're just thinking that you're gonna luck into a data job, not in today's economy. It is so much harder to land a data job today than it was a decade ago, and you have to be intentional about it. It's very rare that a data job is just gonna fall in your lap, even if you're trying hard to land one. You need to develop a plan, a personal roadmap of actual steps that you can take one by one to land your data job. This means when you sit down at your computer to study, you should know exactly what you're studying and why you're studying it. This rarely means that you should ever sit down and be like, hmm, what am I going to do today? No, you should know beforehand exactly what steps you're going to take. I'm gonna be posting on LinkedIn. I'm gonna leave five comments. I'm gonna work on my Tableau project and then I'm gonna call it a night. This will help you get to your goal faster, but it'll also keep your sanity. When I'm tackling big projects like completely pivoting my career, I need to do it step by step, milestone by milestone, and follow actionable steps to get to the end goal. And this actually leads me to number two, which is to actually focus on what lands you a job, not what feels good. If I were to create a scatter plot of time it took to land a data job against how skilled someone is at data skills, say SQL, it would not be a linear one-to-one -one correlation. You'd like to think the people who are better at SQL would land data jobs more quickly, but it's just not the case. There's too many factors in play. In fact, none of your data skills really correlate with how fast you're going to land a job. So why are you spending so much time learning new data skills when that's actually not what correlates to landing a job? Later in this episode, I'll talk about some of the things that I think matter more than your data skills when you're landing a data job, but it's really important that you're focusing on what lands data jobs. For example, if I stayed SQL 24 hours a day for the next 365 days, I'd be really good at SQL, but I wouldn't magically land a data job because I'm good at SQL. It would require me applying to data jobs. There's no magical level that you'll hit in SQL, Python, or any other data tool that's gonna magically get you a data job. And at this point, honestly, if you haven't landed a technical data interview and failed it, it's not your skills holding you back. It's something like your resume or your LinkedIn profile. Unless you're routinely failing technical interviews, you don't need to be working on your technical skills all that much once you have a good foundation. So why is everyone still working on their data skills? 
the phrase that best describes it is one that I don't really enjoy, but I can't think of anything else. I'm actually going to look in ChatGPT right now to see if I can come up with a better phrase. Update, I check ChatGPT, I can't find a better phrase, and it's mental masturbation. It's the idea that you, what you're actually doing is making you feel good, but it's really getting you nowhere. Learning data skills, it makes you feel more productive than sending out 50 cold messages to recruiters and getting no responses. That makes you feel rejection. Learning data skills is fun. It's your learning. It makes you feel productive. But you have to remember that learning data skills and landing a data job are two different things. They are related, but they're not directly correlated. So you have to lower your scope here and actually be laser focused on what you need to do. What is the actual things, the steps you need to take to land a data job? One easy thing that you can start doing to actually help you make some traction on your data journey is number three. And that is to quit being silent and actually share your work. If you're not talking about what you're doing, you honestly don't exist. Now, this can come in a variety of forms. I challenge you to start posting on LinkedIn about what you're learning, your daily data journey. The reason I challenge you to do that is because it literally changed my life. And honestly, if I had never started doing that, I wouldn't be making this video. You would not be hearing my words. I would just be some data scientist from the middle of nowhere in Utah. But because I started talking about what I was doing, you guys are hearing my voice today. So start posting on LinkedIn. Tell me what you learned today. In fact, I challenge you right now to pause this video and go post on LinkedIn and share this video to talk about one of the things you're going to try to do is to talk more and explain and document your process. And now I know some of you guys are thinking, ah, Avery, you are so cringe and everyone's so cringe who posts on LinkedIn. And maybe it is a little cringe, fine. But are you willing to be a little cringe going back up to number one in your why? Your why strong enough to overcome that. Personally, mine is, and I hope yours is as well. If you can't post on LinkedIn for whatever reason, or it's too scary to get started, then just start talking about what you're doing in your resume. Make sure your resume accurately is showing your career pivot. Build a portfolio. Talk about what you're doing on your portfolio. It doesn't even have to be for, for the public's eyes other than when you're applying for jobs to hiring managers and recruiters. Instead of getting stuck in tutorial hell doing the same exercises that the rest of the people watching this YouTube video are doing, build a project. Talk about your project. Do a write-up of your project. Make a video talking about what you've done. Put it on a portfolio. Think about this. A recruiter or a hiring manager basically looks at your application for like anywhere between three to seven seconds. How are you going to stand out in those three to seven seconds? How are they supposed to get an accurate description of who, who you are in that time? The answer is they're not really going to, but if you can provide them with like some evidence, some stuff that you've actually done, like a project, you're going to have a lot higher chance of earning their next 10 seconds and then the next 60 seconds and then the next 60 minutes. In today's economy, it's just not enough to apply for jobs. You have to actually be talking about what you're doing. And this leads me to number four, which is going to be controversial, but you need to be living by the old fashioned maxim. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And that's just the truth. 70% of accepted job offers come from being recruited or referred. This basically means you need to be networking. Remember earlier how I told you skills aren't directly correlated to getting hired? Well, who you know and your network is directly correlated at 70%. Honestly, if that's the case and you actually believe that like two thirds of accepted job offers come from being recruited or referred, why aren't you spending two thirds of your time working on your network? The answer is it doesn't feel good. Networking sucks, especially at the beginning when you're just growing your network. It feels pointless. It feels awkward. You don't know who to talk to. You don't know what to say. Look, I get it. I was the same way. I used to be you watching these videos. And then I did number three and I started posting on LinkedIn and all of a sudden my network was growing. And one day I finally got the courage to actually reach out to Kate Strachny, who was a really big LinkedIn influencer at the time. And I did a collaboration with her. That was after, honestly, I sent dozens, if not hundreds of cold messages that either kind of got ignored or didn't really lead anywhere. They were all just dead ends. And after I went to a bunch of in-person data events and I didn't really meet anyone, I honestly can name one person I met from those events. Networking honestly feels pointless until all of a sudden it doesn't. And for me, one of the biggest changes in my life is when I actually reached out to Ken G. Ken is a data scientist YouTuber who has always had way more followers than me. And one day I reached out and I actually invited him to a platform that was invite only at the time called Clubhouse. It was basically like an audio group call together. It was kind of a weird product, but I offered him my only invite that I had and he really appreciated it. And so we ended up doing a video together and he actually ended up introducing me to people like Alex the Analyst, Josh Starmer, and a bunch of other data content creators who I've now had the chance to interview on my podcast. Getting connected to Ken, it was lucky. I totally admit it had a lot of luck in play. He had to read my message. He had to be interested. 
in Clubhouse at the time, he had to be a good person and kind and want to help me. But you can't just say it's luck because I sent hundreds of other messages that never got opened or never got replied to. Networking, especially for introverts like you and me, will always suck. It's just if your why is big enough, you embrace the suck. This is what I meant earlier when I talked about, you know, learning SQL, learning more SQL is fun, but it's not really getting you closer to your data job when sending cold messages to recruiters would get you closer to your job, but it doesn't really feel like it until it does. In fact, I had a stay-at-home mom who recently landed a data job. She had been out of the workplace for 20 years and her previous roles were a teacher, so not even closely related to data. She landed a data job with only one application, one interview, and she got the offer. She got lucky. And if you just hear that, you would just be like, oh, she got lucky. And she did get lucky. But what you aren't seeing behind the scenes is the hard work and dedication she was putting in towards networking. She found someone for this role that she could cold message. Cold message them, no response. Found another person, cold message, no response. Found another person, cold message, no response. I think most of us would have given up, right? Cold message someone else, response. Said, sorry, I can't help you. I think we would have all given up there, but not this person. She sent another cold message to another person that she found. And this person said, oh, you have an interesting resume. Let me see what I can do. Turns out that role wasn't even supposed to be posted. It was only an internal hire and the recruiter had messed up and actually opened it to the whole world. So hundreds of you had applied for that job and you never stood any chance of actually landing it because they had no intention of actually hiring externally. But because my student had cold messaged this person, their resume was in front of the hiring manager's eyes already. And the hiring manager said, well, this is a pretty interesting resume. Let's take a look and let's bring her in for an interview. She got the role. Networking will help you land jobs that aren't even open. It'll open doors that are locked close. And whether you like it or not, whether you're introverted or not, that's the case for everyone. The last thing that you can do, number five, to actually get ahead of data analysts this year is mind the gap. And what I mean by that is we all have limited time. We each have 24 hours in the day, no matter if you're Elon Musk or the poorest person on planet Earth. That's something that we all have is just 24 hours. And some of you guys are working two jobs. You're working like 80 hours a week. You have kids. I totally get that you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know when I'm going to do this, Avery. Like, how the heck am I going to learn this? And my short answer is, I don't know how you do it either. But here's my suggestion. Mind the gap. And what I mean by that is when you go to the tube in London, they have mind the gap painted on the ground. And they're basically saying, pay attention to the space, the empty space between the edge of the platform and as you step on the actual subway. Obviously, good advice if you're ever on the subway. But what does that have to do with you and your data career? No matter how busy you are and how many things you have on your schedule, you're always going to have little teeny tiny gaps in your day. I have them all the time. And honestly, I feel a lot of it with Instagram scrolling, looking on Twitter and watching YouTube videos kind of like this and watching things like Mr. Beast videos on YouTube. My suggestion to you to get ahead of 99% of data analysts is to fill that gap with videos like this. Cut out as much fluff as you can in the gap and actually try to fill it with things that are valuable, that are worth listening to. I think that's one of the biggest things that you can do in your data career is actually be listening to stuff like this. Because obviously if you're watching, it's involving your eyes. A lot of the time you're going to be at a TV, at your phone, or at your desktop or something like that. But with audio, you can be doing two things at once. So for example, if you have any commute right now, fill that commute with listening to data YouTube videos. If you found this video on YouTube, continue listening on YouTube. If you found this via the podcast, keep listening on podcasts. But obviously, you don't only have to listen to me. There's other great podcasts. I really enjoy the Super Data Science Show, Plumbers of Data Science, How to Land an Analytics Job, Data Engineering Podcast, Data Viz Today. And in terms of YouTube channels, obviously, Alex the Analyst is great. I'm a big fan of Elijah Butler. I just interviewed Tu Vu recently on my podcast, and she's great. I really like Mo Chen's videos. And there's obviously a lot of other good shows. But fill your day and fill specifically those gaps, specifically with audio, with this good data content that's honestly free. I promise as you do that, you will continue to learn and grow without even having to spend more time. So to recap, become laser focused on what you actually want, a title and the why behind it. Then focus on what actually matters. Cut out all the fluff and focus on the actual steps that's going to land you a data role. Then quit being quiet and actually speak up. We want to hear what you're doing and you will benefit from it. Remember, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And five, fill the gap with content like this. If you want to keep filling your gap with my content, I highly suggest this episode next, and I'll have it in the show notes down below.